subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you never miss any video lesson from Rao's IES Study Circle. Join the official Telegram channel of Rao's IES Study Circle to stay updated and get all the materials on the Telegram. The link to the channel can be found in the description box. Hello and welcome to the Indian Express Explained section for the second week for July 2021. Now in this analysis we have taken such news which has not been discussed in the DNS current affairs videos. So in this regard let's go through the important news which has appeared in the explained section of Indian Express especially from our UPSC civil services examination perspective. Now let's take up our first news which says that a proposed elephant reserve namely the Lemuru elephant reserve in Chhattisgarh and its reduced area. This news highlights that in a letter dated June 26, the State Forest and Environment Department has asked the Principal Chief Conservator of Forest Wildlife to make a presentation for decreasing the area of proposed reserve from 1995 square kilometer to 450 square kilometer. So one begs a question as to why the state government has decided to reduce the elephant conservation reserve from 1995 square kilometer to 450 square kilometer. So in this news analysis, let us understand this reason and also about establishment of the Lemuru Elephant Reserve. Now wild elephants in Chhattisgarh mostly wander into the area from Jharkhand. So there was a discussion in the state government to provide a proper corridor, especially in the northern area of Chhattisgarh. And it was here where the state government of Chhattisgarh decided to establish the Lemuru Elephant Reserve in 2005 and also got the central approval in 2007. And the purpose to establish Lemuru Elephant Reserve was based on a high level committee appointed by the central government. The committee stated that the Lemuru Elephant Reserve will provide a protected area for elephant conservation and it will also provide food, water and other facilities to these wild elephants. Now these corridors will help the wild elephants not to venture into the populated area and less venturing of these wild elephants into populated area would have resulted in lesser man-elephant conflict and also lesser damage to crop property and human lives as number of people also died because of man-elephant conflict. So according to the state government of Chhattisgarh, this Lemuru Elephant Reserve was supposed to be a part of an elephant corridor connecting Lemuru to Badalkhol in Jashpur district and Tamor Pingla in the Sarguja district as the state government thought that linking of these areas was necessary in order to provide these elephants protected area. Now interesting point to be noted here is that in the year 2005 when the state government proposed the Lemuru Elephant Reserve, the state government proposed an area of 450 square kilometer and this was also approved by the central government in the year 2007. However, in 2011, the state government issued a notification to set up the elephant reserve across 1143 square kilometer. So the proposed area for Lemuru Elephant Reserve was increased from 450 square kilometer to 1143 square kilometer as of 2011. Further in August 2019, the current government further decided to increase the area of elephant reserve to 1995 square kilometer. So we see a gradual increase in the protected area for elephants and these elephant reserves was to be established under section 36A of Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. However, on June 26, 2021, the State Forest Department has asked the Principal Chief Conservator of Forest Wildlife to decrease the proposed reserve from 1995 square kilometer back to 450 square kilometer. So the question which remains is why does the state government which initially increased the elephant reserve area to 1995 square kilometer now wants to reduce the area to 450 square kilometer. And the answer is that these areas are also rich in coal deposits and there are also certain coal mines which the government wants to auction. And these rich coal deposit areas are found along the catchment areas of Hasdeo and Man rivers which are tributaries of river Mahanadi. So this is why the state government intends to reduce the elephant reserve area from 1995 square kilometer to 450 square kilometer. 
Now one of the probable reason as to reducing the area of Lemru Elephant Reserve from 1995 square kilometer to that of mere 450 square kilometer can be with respect to availability of coal for industrial purpose especially for power plants in the state of Rajasthan Andhra Pradesh and Chhattisgarh Now this is also because if the area is categorized as conservation reserve under section 36A of Wildlife Protection Act then such land declared as conservation reserve would be difficult to acquire for the purpose of coal mining so declaration of such a large area as conservation reserve under section 36A of Wildlife Protection Act would lead to difficulty in land acquisition for coal mining and overall this may also lead to reduction in investment in the state especially for the purpose of coal mining so all these can be probable reasons as to why the state government has decided to reduce the elephant reserve area from 1995 square kilometer to mere 450 square kilometer now from your examination perspective you need to know two things one is that the aspect of elephant reserve or the concept of elephant reserve is not provided under the wildlife protection act 1972 rather these elephant reserves are established as conservation reserve and these conservation reserves are established under section 36a of the wildlife protection act 1972 by respective state governments so accordingly the state government of chatisgarh has established the lemru elephant reserve as a conservation reserve under section 36a of wildlife protection act 1972 now another important aspect is that if the conservation reserve includes any land of the central government then the prior concurrence of the central government becomes necessary so section 36a provides for declaration and management of conservation reserve it highlights that a state government may after having consultations with the local communities declare any area owned by the government particularly the areas adjacent to national parks and sanctuaries and those areas which link one protected area with another as a conservation reserve for protecting the landscapes seascapes flora and fauna and their habitat so this is why the state government of chatisgarh decided to establish the lemru elephant reserve so that this can link one protected area with that of another and the other aspect highlighted here is that where the conservation reserve includes any land owned by the central government its prior concurrence shall be obtained before making such declaration by the state government so it is under section 36a that any state government can declare an area as conservation reserve to establish a elephant reserve Now if you look into this map it provides for Hasdeo Arand coal field Parsa coal block and also Basan coal block and if you notice that all of these areas are mostly in the northern part of Chhattisgarh and here is the river Mand and this one is river Hasdeo and both these river join the river Mahanadi so it is because of this presence of these coal blocks mostly in the northern area of Chhattisgarh the state government has proposed to reduce the area of lemru elephant reserve from 1995 square kilometer to 450 square kilometer now apart from these information you also need to know about project elephant now project elephant was launched by the government of india as a centrally sponsored scheme in the year 1992 now the whole objective of launching this scheme was threefold namely to protect the elephants their habitats and their corridors to address issues of man animal conflict and also welfare of captive elephants and for this particular project state governments were provided financial assistance by the central government however this financial assistance was based on annual plan of operation which was to be submitted by the state governments to central government so based on project elephant even the state government of chatisgarh has been receiving central funds for project elephant so that they can build these special habitats and corridors for the protection of elephant and also to reduce man animal conflict further from your examination perspective you need to know that asian elephants that is elephas maximus which has been provided protection under schedule 1 of wildlife protection act 1972 has also been declared as endangered as per the iucn red list further project elephant has also been implementing the monitoring of illegal killing of elephants program that is mike program of sites 
and this is being done in elephant reserves since January 2004. Now the whole purpose of this MIC program is to monitor trend in the illegal killing of elephants, build management capacity and provide information to help states make appropriate management and enforcement decisions. Now these are some of the important information which can be asked in your prelims examination with respect to project elephant and also about the protection status of elephants in India and across the world. Now with an intention to reduce human elephant conflict, Ministry of MSME has launched Project Rehab that is reducing elephant human attacks using bees. Now under this project, bee fences shall be created specially at conflict zones between elephant and human. Now this project has been launched by the Khadi and Village Industries Commission in the state of Karnataka close to the Nagarhol National Park and Tiger Reserve as this area is prone to human elephant conflict. So you must know project rehab especially from your prelims and also from your mains perspective in order to reduce human elephant conflict. And this program has been launched by Khadi and Village Industries Commission under the Ministry of Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises. Now this particular article becomes important primarily from the perspective of prelims under environmental section and in the mains question can be asked both from the perspective of environment and also economy under GS paper 3. So questions can be asked with respect to project elephant, project rehab, conservation reserves which is constituted under the Wildlife Protection Act and also with respect to coal mining in the area of Chhattisgarh. So this article becomes important from all these perspectives. With this, let's move to the next article of discussion. Now let's take up our next article from the explained section. It says an aerospace engineer on suborbital flights. Now in this news analysis, we need to understand the difference between orbital and suborbital flights. It says anything that launches to space but does not have sufficient horizontal velocities to stay in space like these rockets comes back to earth and therefore flies a suborbital trajectory. The news highlights that suborbital is a term you'll be hearing a lot as Sir Richard Branson flies aboard Virgin Galactic's VSS Unity spaceship and Jeff Bezos flies aboard Blue Origin's New Shepard vehicle to touch the boundary of space and experience a few minutes of weightlessness. So again the question becomes that what exactly is suborbital? This news highlights that simply means that while these vehicles will cross the ill-defined boundary of space, they will not be going fast enough to stay in space once they get there. So what we understand from these lines from the newspaper is that with respect to suborbital speed or suborbital velocity, the spacecraft or the object reaches to certain altitude but again comes back to earth. So from my examination perspective, let us understand about the orbital trajectory and suborbital trajectory. Now primarily between these two trajectory, there is a difference of speed and this difference of speed is quite large. So orbital velocity can be said to be such speed which the object or the spacecraft must maintain to remain in orbit around a particular planet. Whereas this is not the case in suborbital trajectory as the speed is very less as compared to the speed needed to achieve orbital velocity and here the object or the spacecraft does not remain in space forever as it takes an almost parabolic path and comes down back to earth. Now let us understand this difference through this diagram for orbital and suborbital trajectory. Now as we stated that orbital velocity is the speed which the object or the spacecraft must maintain to remain in orbit around a planet. So this particular rocket is maintaining orbital velocity. Now another important aspect with respect to orbital velocity is that once orbit is achieved through the velocity, the object or the spacecraft flies at consistent height above the planet. So this particular object which has achieved orbital velocity, it will consistently fly at a consistent height above the earth. And another important aspect is that this arc shape which is maintained through this orbital velocity must match the curvature of the earth of the flight. However, in a suborbital trajectory, the arc achieved 
is not equivalent or not equal to the curvature of the flight and it is very different now to orbit 125 miles above the earth a spacecraft or any object must travel at 28000 km per hour whereas suborbital flight needs much lower speed or travels at much lower speed as it need not achieve this particular orbit now the suborbital flights need not achieve the orbit and therefore they travel at a much lower speed rather the suborbital flights fly to a certain height which depends on the speed of the spacecraft or the object and then comes back down to earth once its engines are shut off so to reach 125 miles above earth a suborbital vehicle needs to fly at 6000 km per hour which is way less than the speed of an orbital spacecraft now another important aspect with respect to suborbital flight is that at the top of the flight arc that is somewhere around here the passenger in the vehicle can feel weightlessness somewhere around here and this weightlessness shall be felt for few minutes now in fact this weightlessness is because they are experiencing free fall so these are some of the basic differences with respect to orbital and suborbital trajectories now this topic for orbital and suborbital trajectory becomes important both from your prelims and mains point of view in the prelims question can be asked under the aspect of general science and in the mains question can be asked under the aspect of gs paper 3 specially under science and technology developments and their applications and effects in everyday life so after understanding about orbital trajectory and suborbital trajectory let's take up our next article in the explained section now the next news appearing in the explained section mentions about the story of sir chetur sankaran nair who took on the british empire in their own courts it says that sir chetur sankaran nair was known for being a passionate advocate for social reforms and a firm believer in the self determination of india so in this analysis let us understand about the achievements and the role played by sir sankaran nair in the freedom struggle now this news highlights about two important books namely the case that shook the empire which was written by his great grandson raghu palat and his wife pushpa palat in 2019 and the book titled gandhi and anarchy written by sir c s nair himself now after publishing of this book in 1922 lieutenant governor of punjab sir michael o'doyer filed a defamation case against sir nair and in this case which was presided by 12 judge was fought brilliantly and elegantly by sir chetur sankaran nair so in this analysis let us learn about his achievements and also his role during the freedom struggle Now Sir Nair was born in the year 1857 in Mankara village in Malabar's Palakkad district and he belonged to an aristocratic family. Now Mr Nair was considered to be very stubborn in his beliefs and even went against a resolution passed by Indian advocates or wakils of Madras stating that no Indian wakil would work as a junior to an English barrister. Now despite the fact that Sir Nair opposed this resolution but he was not supported by other advocates and the other advocates boycotted him further he also criticized the montague chance for reforms in 1908 for being partial towards englishmen now this criticism by sir nair infuriated the anglo indian community who petitioned the viceroy and the secretary of state for india and objected to his appointment as high court judge now sir nair was also a social reformer and did not believe in the caste system and rather supported inter caste marriage so when he was nominated to the madras executive council the brahmin community in madras asking the viceroy to not appoint mr nair since he was anti brahmin now mr nair because of his firm belief was also considered as an impossible person by none other than edwin monte who was the secretary of state for india and mr sankaran nair passed away in 1934 when he was at the age of 77 so moving forward we need to know about the achievements of sir chetur sankaran nair his role in indian freedom movement the aspect that he was a social reformer and was against caste system and even in some of his judgments he upheld inter caste and inter religious marriages and also about the book gandhi and anarchy 
which led to the historical court room battle because of case of defamation filed by the lieutenant governor of punjab sir michael odoy so regarding the achievements of sir sankaran nair in 1897 he became the youngest president of the indian national congress in the history of party till those times by 1908 he was appointed as a permanent judge in the madras high court in 1902 lord curzon appointed him as a member of the raleigh university commission which was appointed to look into the condition of education in indian universities now in 1904 he was appointed as companion of the indian empire by the king emperor and in 1912 he was knighted further in 1915 he became part of viceroy's council and was put in charge of the education portfolio as he had also been a member of raleigh university commission now regarding the raleigh university commission it was appointed under the presidency of sir thomas raleigh on 27 january 1902 Now this commission was appointed to inquire into the condition and prospects of universities in India and also to recommend proposal for improving their constitution and working. Now important point to be noted here is that the commission was precluded from reporting on primary or secondary education in India as its objective was only to report on the aspect of education in Indian universities. and based on the report of the commission the indian universities act of 1904 was passed and the main objective of the indian universities act 1904 was to improve the condition of education in india and also upgrade the system to a better level so these are some of the important highlights with respect to the raleigh commission which can be asked in your prelims examination now let's also understand about the role of sir nair in freedom movement Now he was a firm believer of India's right for self-government and criticized British policies. Now in 1919 Sir Nair played an important role in the expansion of provisions in the Montague Chance Fund reforms which introduced a system of diarchy in the provinces and increased participation of Indians in the administration. So he played a major role in the expansion of provisions in the 1919 Act. which introduced the system of diarchy in the provinces now this aspect also must be remembered from your prelims point of view further post jallianwala bagh tragedy or massacre he resigned from viceroy's executive council and after his resignation press censorship in punjab was lifted and even martial law was terminated and even a committee was set up under lord william hunter to examine the disturbance in punjab so these can be said to be the impact of his resignation from the viceroy's executive council post jallianwala bagh massacre now sir nair also wrote a book titled gandhi and anarchy and this book was written specially after jallianwala bagh massacre and was published in 1922 now in the book sir nair criticized gandhi ji's methods specially those of non violence civil disobedience and non cooperation So all these methods adopted by Gandhi ji during freedom struggle was criticized by Sir Sankaran Nair. Now he criticized these methods of Gandhi ji because he believed that any of these movements was destined to lead to riots and bloodshed. So according to Sir Nair's belief the methods of non-violence civil disobedience movement and non-cooperation would eventually lead to riots and bloodshed. So if a statement is asked by UPSC stating that Sir Sankaran Nair supported the methods of non-violence civil disobedience movement and non-cooperation by Gandhi ji then this statement would be incorrect further in his book Gandhi and Anarchy Sir Nair also accused Michael Odoyer for his coercive methods that led to the death of hundred of innocent men and women because of Jallianwala Bagh massacre Now after publishing of this book in 1922 Sir Michael O'Doyer filed a defamation case against Sir Nair in England and this led to the historic court room battle So this historic court room battle on which a movie is to be made is about a defamation case that Sir Sankar Nair fought in London and Sir Nair fought this case against Sir Michael O'Doyer who was the former lieutenant governor of Punjab Now this case was argued by Sir Sankaran Nair for almost six weeks as a lawyer at Court of King's Bench in England, and the case exposed the horrors of Jallianwala Bagh massacre 
and the atrocities committed by the British Empire in Punjab. Now, this 12-member all-English jury was presided by Justice Henry McCarty, who, from the very beginning of this trial, favoured the former Lieutenant Governor of Punjab and did not allow a fair trial for Sir Sankaran Nair. And because of the favourable stance taken by Justice Henry McCarty for Michael O'Doyle, he won the case with a majority of 11 judges against one, where the only dissenting judge was Justice Harold Lusky. Now, despite the fact that Sir Sankaran Nair had lost the case, he exposed British imperialistic policies and this, in a way, strengthened India's freedom struggle. So, it says that at a time when nationalist movement was gaining momentum, Indians saw in the judgment a clear bias of the British government and an effort to shield those who committed atrocities against their own people. So, effectively, this verdict against Sir Sankaran Nair proved momentous as it strengthened the determination of nationalists to fight for self-government in India. So overall this trial exposed British biasness and also strengthened the determination for self-government for Indians. So in this backdrop we must know about Sir Chetur Sankaran Nair as he was a prominent figure of Indian national freedom struggle. Now based on our discussion let's take up these practice questions. Practice question number one. Consider the following statements. The Wildlife Protection Act 1972 provides for establishing elephant corridors and elephant reserves. Now we have seen that this statement is incorrect as it only provides for establishing conservation reserves. Second, project rehab has been introduced to reduce elephant-human conflict by establishing bee fences. Yes, this statement is correct. So the question is, which of the statements given above is our Correct. So here the correct answer becomes B, that is 2 only. Moving to question number 2, it says, consider the following statements. First, suborbital spacecrafts travel at much higher speed than spacecrafts which intends to reach orbital velocity. No, this is incorrect as the reverse is true. The spacecraft which intends to reach orbital velocity travels at a much higher speed as compared to suborbital spacecrafts which travels at a much lower speed. Second, suborbital spacecrafts can remain in space forever by orbiting the Earth. No, this statement is again incorrect. So the question is which of the statements given above is our correct. So here the correct answer becomes D, that is neither 1 nor 2. Practice question number 3. It says consider the following statements about Sir Chetur Sankaran Nair. First, he was knighted by the British government. Yes, this is correct. Second, he opposed methods adopted by Mahatma Gandhi to achieve independence. Yes, this is also correct as he opposed civil disobedience, non-cooperation and also non-violence. Third, he wrote the book The Case That Shook the Empire which led to his defamation case in London. No, this statement is incorrect as this book is not written by him but rather written by his great-grandson in 2019. Rather, he wrote the book Gandhi and Anarchy. So the question is, which of the statements given above is are correct? So here the correct answer becomes B, that is 1 and 2 only. So we understand that the topics which we discussed becomes important both from our prelims and also from our mains perspective as questions can be asked with respect to the topics which we have discussed from the explained section in your mains examination. So with this we come to an end for the second week of discussion for the explained section from Indian Express. Thank you.